Okay, we'll do a video today. It's going to be a little bit different to our other videos. Um, it, it's we're, we're getting so we've bought this Freelander 2 crashed, and one of the things that happens when you crash a car and the airbags deploy is it actually saves the data of the crash, how fast you're going, whether the brake was pressed, whether the accelerator was pressed. I'm not sure of the exact parameters, but it saves a chunk of the parameters. And basically, you need to remove the ECU from the car and either send it off um, and get that data cleared because with that data in its memory, it cannot function. Um, so you'll have your airbag light on. You need to clear all the codes out of it so it's it's ready to operate again. So that's what we're doing. We've removed it from the car. We'll do you a video to show you how to remove this. So this is a Land Rover Freelander 2 airbag ECU. Well, where's the cover for that? Yeah, let's have a look who, who makes this. So here it is. So it's actually, um, it's got FOMO Co on it. So it's a Ford Motor <laughs> Company derivative part. Um, and it's made by Bosch. So the airbag mo system seems to be pretty much standalone. That's the case it comes in. You remove the screws on the back. Oh, we've got eBay written on. We bought one on eBay just to um, just to play with before we, we... And what we've done is we bought a kit off eBay also, um, which is claiming to help us reset airbags. So it, it comes with a little box here. There we go. Um, and it comes with a load of adapter leads. So it's a simple box. Oh, my God, I'm trashing the place. Um, and it comes with, like, one million leads to plug into different things. That looks like an ODB two-port adapter. Um, God knows what all these do. But it was relatively inexpensive. And the lead we need, and what we need to do, or you need to do, if you're going to play with a Freelander 2 airbag module, is when you look at the module here, um, you've got these two, like like... Old, um, the old gas town silos um, and then just here we've got this eight legged IC which is the EEPROM now the lead, one of the leads that comes here is this sort of crocodile eight legged lead and the way it goes is, remind me Ian, so the pink and purple lead there the plugs. go towards those two great big canisters, yeah all the plugs as you say so what you do is you open that up and clip that on, clip that on there like so, or not like so, go on, you have a go at doing it here. Right, okay, you got little okay. teeth that engage. And then we'll show you how the program works, right, okay, so um, do you want to open up the program as if you're opening up from starting? So it comes with this bit of software, and we're going to open it up on the laptop. All the software comes on the disk. Yep. Okay, we open it up. Come on in. We're on video, Mr. Tom. Come on in. Right. And here we go. So you've got two options. We've got two options. Hold on. Okay. So we opened up the uh, software. Oh, yeah, we're doing this again. That's all right. We'll edit that. Right. So if you open up this software that comes with the, the pack of goodies... It comes up with this screen, okay, which has got these menus here. Right then. So we've got airbag, yeah. and then you can select your make. So we're going, it comes under rover, oddly, but yeah, we've got that. And we need to go direct. And, and it actually tells you where, yeah, so it tells you where to do, but some cars you can apparently plug it in the ODB2 plug, but we, it tells us we need that connector and we've got to go direct, which is what we've done. And now it's trying to connect, and it should be reading the data out of this EEPROM and trying to show us our crap, crap, crap data. Probably will be crap data, crash data. Um, so this is the no, it hasn't read it. We'll try again. Sometimes it doesn't read it first time. It's a little bit fussy. Is it? Shall I wiggle the contacts? Yeah. We'll try it the other way. So which way have you gone in? You've gone. You've actually to gone into the into the EEPROM. So, because a lot of these airbags all seem to use the same EEPROM. So, here we go, let's have a look. If not, we'll wiggle the contacts. And which EEPROM is it using? Uh, it's 59320. That's it. It should be written on the chip. If, if, you can, if you've got some sort of supersonic eyes. 
Right, so there we go. Is this reading it in? There we go. Right, this is quite interesting, isn't it? So this is a dot bin file or a binary file, and it's in hexadecimal. So you can have any value in these little grids of two. Um, from FF is the maximum, from zero zero is the minimum. And it translates what it can on this side here. And what you'll see here is some of this data here, this SAL number here, is actually a, is the chassis number for the car, for the ECU we bought on, um, on eBay. Um, and that actually, you can work out what it correlates to. So you can work out like the, the A e equals, what was it? That's the, uh, A is... Because you, you've got S, A, A. A is 41. A is 41. Um, so got it there. Yeah, and then, there. yeah. So you can work out what it means. And then you've got a series of FF which look empty. And then as you scroll down, so I'm guessing a lot of this is all to do with the crash data and will tell us if we could decipher what it all meant, what the crash entailed and stuff. Now what we can do, right, so you've got that file, that's great. Now what you need to do is clean or scrub the data now, if you know what to change, you can do that yourself, or you can go to this website we found, this TacoSoft Online Services on the screen behind us, and we can actually upload the file to them, and they, they will run it through their scrubber and send us back a clean file. So once you've extracted it out of your EEPROM, um, you need to upload it to that. So we'll have a go at uploading it now. You've got to log in and register and buy some credits, but it's relatively inexpensive. Um, let's have a go. Let's have a go. So I think oh, they've actually got Land Rover there. Freelander. And then that number there, the Bosch number, should match the Bosch number. Where's the lid in? I think our Bosch number was 639 ended, didn't it? Uh, Bosch, so the Bosch number is, six, oh, it's 206. Five, two. So it's 0025, <laughs> 010, 206. So have they got the 206? Yes. yes. So they've got that. So you pick the one you've got there. Okay. Uh, okay. So then you can upload your file. So we'll find, so we've saved the file that we've extracted out of our ECU. It's a bin file format. You got the right one? Yeah, that's the yeah. right one. So there we go. I'm going to proceed to do that. Please don't allow a modified file here. This all looks good. That was quick. Must have some. Is it doing it? What's that when you do that? Something comes up at the bottom. Would you like your password saved? Oh god, what's going on? Is it having it? There you go. Oh. Um, finish time is it? Open it with yeah. So it's going to hopefully have chucked it in our downloads. So we're looking for a dot bin file in our downloads. There we go. You got it. Yeah, and you might want to rename that. Um, clean or something. Now, can we actually open that just with that bin editor? So you can download some bin editor files so let's so we can actually open that now and have a look in the bin editor a bin file editor and see what it looks like so here we go let's open it's a bit techy this video is a bit it's not our normal bag is it we're making this up a bit Right, so it's left the chassis number, and so actually we, we've got it, Ian's got it set up here with the original data we read out of the ECU there, and the clean data, so you can see it's got a lot of, a lot more FFs in, um, and then clearly it's got a, a bit of stuff there that's... It still retains some of the info. It still retains some info, so yeah, you can't, it's not just a question of replacing everything with FF, it looks a fairly complex, so yeah, you get, so yeah, it's still got a lot of that back end stuff there hasn't it so we can only believe them that this is now clean so we will now log in back into our thing and download that file write that file into the eprom so we'll log back into the the other software we've got and write that so using this little widget box here we're going to write that back into the ecu and that should be a clean ecu
So we'll give that a go. Okay, so we did have a bit of a problem right in the file. Um, it wrote most of it, but there was there was like the last half of every other line was not doing it. So we've desoldered the chip from the board. So if you have a look in the end there, we've just got the EEPROM on its own in there now. And that's written fine now. So we'll go back and resolder that back on the board. If you desolder it, make sure you get the chip on the right way round. Um, when you resort it back on. So we're going to put it back on the board and then I suggest we read it again once we got it back on the board. Because it seems to read on the board okay but just not right. There must be another pin on the circuit board that's pulling the voltage down, um, disabling the right. Okay, we'll have a go at that. 